Hello and welcome to another video on differential equations. In this video, I'm going to talk about non-homogeneous systems of ODEs. And in this case, I'm going to uh, look at an example where the matrix uh, defining the equation is not invertible. So as you can see in this example here, we've got x prime equal matrix 2, 1, 4, 2 multiplied by x plus 3, 6. Okay, so um, Whenever addressing one of these problems, we're going to need to find a homogeneous solution and a particular solution in order to construct the general solution. And so let's focus first on finding x sub h of t, the homogeneous solution. So we do that by first finding the eigenvalues. And the characteristic equation is easy to write down for two by two matrices. And that is lambda squared minus the trace of a, which is four times lambda, plus the determinant of A. And you'll notice here, be, because it's a non-invertible matrix, we end up with a determinant of zero. Okay, so uh, the roots of the characteristic equation are gonna be lambda one equals zero and lambda two equal four. And so when we find the eigenvectors, we're gonna take A minus lambda I, which is just A for lambda one, and that gives us this matrix multiplied by V1, the first eigenvector, and that has to be equal to zero. And we can see that V1 has to be uh, one minus two or something parallel to that. Okay, so you can test that out and just multiply it. You'll see that you get a zero vector when you multiply by the matrix. Okay, so for lambda two equal four, we get the matrix minus two, one, four minus two, and that's multiplied by v2, and in this case, that will be equal to zero if we choose v2 to be equal to one, two. So now we can assemble our x h of t using these eigenvalues and eigenvectors. We're gonna have c1 times e to the lambda t with lambda one equals zero just gives me one, and so I just have the eigenvector one minus two with no exponential term and then plus c2 e to the 4t multiplied by eigenvector 1, 2. Okay, so that is the uh, homogeneous solution. Now we need to figure out what the xp of t is. And so we're going to have to guess for a particular solution. So in the last example, when, v, when a was invertible, when the matrix was invertible, we just guessed that it was a constant solution. So we have a bit of a problem here, in, and that is that um, we have a vector here, 3, 6, that is a constant vector, and we also have that the homogeneous solution, which is x prime equal 2, 1, 4, 2 times x, this will have uh, a, a constant vector here that's... Um, that's a solution to it. And so we have a constant vector as our inhomogeneity. How do we know if we need to uh, worry about the, the uh, conflict between those like we did with second order differential equations? So it turns out in this case, because I've chosen that, um, that vector three, six very carefully, we don't have to worry about it. And let's see how that works out okay. So I'm gonna leave my guess as just this V vector. And then uh, from that, I get that XP prime of T is equal to zero because v is a constant vector and that means my equation is now zero the zero vector is equal to two four one two multiplied by uh, vector v which is my xp plus three six okay so uh this is i gonna i can rearrange this into the matrix equation two four one two times v is equal to minus three minus six when I bring that over to the other side. And I'm gonna rewrite this. Well, okay, first let's just, um, let's just solve this equation. So, um, well, actually I won't. Let me actually write it down and give you a bit of a geometric interpretation. So I wanna rewrite this as the first column two, four, uh, okay. Let me, let me back up. So uh, let's multiply this out. So I'm gonna have two times V1 plus V2, and that's gonna be the first component, and then four times V1 plus two times V2, and that's the second component. And I'm gonna um, 
take that and I want to set that equal to minus 3, minus 6. Let me rearrange this and rewrite it as a vector 2, 4 multiplied by v1 add to vector 1, 2 multiplied by v2 and that will be equal to minus 3, minus 6. Okay, so here what do we have? We have a, a, a picture where we're trying to take two vectors and find some linear combination of them that's equal to a third. But you'll notice that these two vectors, so 1, 2 is a little bit steeper than that, it's like this, and then 2, 4 is even steeper still, but they're parallel. And so when I try to solve this equation here, I can't always solve it. Because A isn't invertible, I'm not guaranteed to be able to solve that, but it turns out that this vector, 3 minus 3 minus 6, is perfectly in line with those two vectors. So I'm going to have a whole solution space for that, I'm going to be able to choose, let's say, I could choose v1 equals 0 and v2 equal minus 3. That would work. Or v1 equal minus 1 and v2 equal minus 1, and so on. I could find a whole space of them, but all I needed was 1, and I've got it. So let me just write down xp of t is equal to the vector 0 minus 3. Now this worked out because the... Um, the inhomogeneity, 3, 6, was right in line with 1, 2, and 2, 4, and it made for a very easy solution to this v1, v2 problem, but it also means that um, we didn't run into the trouble, like if we had had a vector that was lying out here, we'd never be able to get to it. And what's wrong with this case is that there is a component of this vector that is um, part of the... Uh, solution to the homogeneous equation. In other words, this vector right here has a component hiding in this one here, and that's what causes the trouble. So let's, in the next video, go through a case where the vector is not such a nicely cooked up 3, 6, but it's something a little bit trickier.